Welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. Today is Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. And today we're going to be discussing the 2024 presidential election and take a look and do a prediction with what arguably is the most likely scenario when it comes to the nominations. Again, the 2024 election is really up in the air when it comes to the primaries and a lot of different factors. But as of right now, I think it could be agreed that Donald Trump and Joe Biden, assuming they do run um, in 2024, are going to be the front runners for their parties. But before we do begin this video, I did want to remind you guys to like, subscribe, and to turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Also, I want to remind you guys that channel memberships are now open. If you would like to become a Purple Political Talk channel member, you could do so by pressing the link down in the description or pressing the join tab next to the subscribe button. And in that spirit, I did want to give a very big thank you to Adam Hurst, one of our Purple Political Talk channel members. We really could not do this without you. But now that we've gotten all of this out of the way, let's get started with the video. So I'm going to start by filling in the safe states. And while I'll do this, I want to talk about some of the big things and some caveats when it comes to this race first of all we don't really know if this is going to be um you know the actual scenario so again take this with a grain of salt now i think when it comes to the primaries i think 2024 characterizes itself as a very different election i think it's going to be an election you know unlike others we've seen in the past in that um you know i think the first thing is it's clear that both parties lack a united identity when it comes to their bases. You know, I think that there is more establishment Republicans and, and the party divisions have gotten bigger. You know, you probably before had a couple of people within these parties at big levels in Congress and in, in public offices that, you know, they could differ in opinion. But this has, you know, shifted and now it's a big part of all the parties. And there's just so many different ideologies that issues regarding from the primary could spill over into the general election but i think it's something that's important and i think second of all one of the big things that we're going to be seeing is with joe biden being in office for four years and again assuming that the kind of current environment stays the same this is if the election was uh, was held today kind of what it would really look like I think that Joe Biden, you know, ha would have, would be at such a disadvantage because his administration has done essentially nothing when it comes to a lot of different issues. And when they have, people have not realized it and people um, haven't perceived it. Remember, politics is about perception, not reality. You know, it's tough to say that, but that's unfortunately what it is. Perception is, you know, the biggest thing in politics. So if you're Joe Biden... The perception of you right now is not good and you know i think it's something that could help out the republicans yet again we also have to remember that donald trump has a lot of political baggage unlike again we've seen in almost any political candidate in the past running for president so that is something that's very important but on your screen right now you're going to see all your safe states i think donald trump would have 125 electoral votes on the safe column while joe biden would have 183. now the toss-up states is really where we can see what's going to happen these are the seats that you know kind of flip flop where you know they're, they're kind of close and tight in a lot of these elections and i think that's going to be again the deciding factor like in any other election so let's get started with the prediction and talk about um the likely states and um likely states again are states that would go between five and fifteen percent for the respective party so let's start off with the democratic party and their likely state so i think as of right now there are some states the republicans or the, the democrats would likely win by likely margin colorado new mexico these are states that while have trended you know a little bit further to the left over the years we're going to see kind of a general moving a little bit to the right trend nationwide that's going to affect these places i could go as far as saying that new mexico could go below five points um and i wouldn't be surprised i would say that if I had to put money on it, I would put New Mexico at the 5 to 7% range and Colorado probably from the 8 to 10% range. Now, I think that that's kind of where the Democrats stop. This is going to be a very tough campaign for the Democrats. You know, other place where I actually could think the Democrats could win probably New Hampshire, but I, I'm going to talk about New Hampshire in just a bit. As for the Republicans, there are states that they have built solid support in you know over the years iowa ohio these are states that as recently as 2008 went for barack obama and it's really impressive to see how the democrats completely lost it in these states 
I think it's one that they're out of touch with a lot of the population. And remember, these are states that go heavily on the economy. If the economy is not at its prime state like it was in certain points, for example, during the Trump administration, and the difference could be felt by voters, you can bet your top dollar that those voters are going to go out and vote for Donald Trump. And remember, these states went for Donald Trump in 2020. I wouldn't be surprised. Along with that, we have the state of Maine. I would go say of the state of Texas as well. These are all states that have been trending Republican, are generally Republican. And I think it ultimately, it's going to show that there's you know a, a large possibility for the Republicans to keep the 2020 margins, if not exceed them. You know, if 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 things had been different, let's suppose Donald Trump got reelected to office, the 2024 map will look completely different. You could say it would be, you know, a a blue wave tsunami that unlike anything we've seen in the past. Now, that is not the political reality. The political reality right now is that Democrats won in 2020, and again, that's gonna affect them long term. And I really want to talk and make a video about this because I think it's a very interesting topic. Um, but I think th those trends that the Democrats are going to have a tough election in 2024, we're going to see on this map. So that covers all their likely states. Let's move on to the lean states. Remember, lean states are states that would go between one and a half and five percent for the respective party. Let's start off with the Democrats again. I think in the lean column, we're probably going to be looking at states like Minnesota. I doubt that Minnesota could be going for, um, you know, for the GOP, and I really doubt it's going to get under a 1.5% margin. I think 1.5% is a pretty fair play when it comes to Minnesota. There is still a lot of Democrats, and generally speaking, Democrats are somewhat popular in Minnesota. Now, I do think that there's certain aspects that, you know, the Republicans could exceed in western Minnesota. And if, generally speaking suburban voters shy away from democrats in unseen levels that is a possibility and i think that um it could happen i mean take a look at virginia now i don't think that virginia trend is going to apply at nationwide level completely but it's going to definitely have influence among so vo some voters and that's something that's important so with that i would say that virginia is a state that would go slightly for the for the democrats i think the margin certainly would you know be decreased from what we saw back in you know 2020 it's not going to be as a comfortable victory for joe biden now i do think that when you start putting donald trump on that ticket a lot of voters especially in virginia and i think virginia is one of those states that's really scared of donald trump the, the, that's one of the states that i think the, the the republicans won't do as well as in comparison to the nationwide trend and with that i also say new hampshire i mean i think new hampshire and virginia usually vote similarly i think that they're two states that you know, they kind of have the same um, white college educated voters for the most part or make up a large chunk of the voters in these states. And I think that that's going to be something that's going to be influential for the Democrats. Not to say that the Republicans couldn't make in what could win here with other candidates, because I think that if the candidate stopped Donald Trump and you see someone else as a candidate, places like Virginia would actually be a lot closer. But again, this is not the current scenario we're talking about. So that covers the Democrats. Let's move over to the Republicans. As for the Republicans, they feel like they're going to do very well in places that they've performed in the past. Florida, North Carolina. Um, I would go as far as saying Arizona and Georgia are states where I could see the Republicans winning by at least one and a half percent. You know, probably on the lower part of that of that margin of one and a half to five percent in Georgia and Arizona, where I think a lot of suburban voters could revert back to voting Republican. I think that again, for this to happen, Donald Trump's going to have to, you know, do a very good job by campaigning against Biden. And again, remember, it's always easier in politics to be in the offense than defending. This is the reason why people like Donald Trump have won in the past. People like. Joe Biden, in the very highly polarized American politics of today, being in the offense is almost a gift sent down um, from the sky. So that is something that's going to be very interesting. I think that that trend applies in a lot of these places. Florida has been trending heavily Republican. I think it's not to the point where they could be winning by over 5%. Now, I do think that the Republicans have a stronghold on the state. North Carolina, another state that the Republicans have built up coalitions that are going to help them win in races nationwide for, for, for a lot of time being. I think it's something that, again, is important. 
And this applies to many different places. I mean, Arizona, Georgia, suburban voters that could be carrying the victory for the Republicans in these states. So at a general level, I think that the Republicans are going to do well in those states. Now, as you can see, the, the election comes down to Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, as well as the state of Nevada. So I think that in all of these places, the Republicans have a chance of winning. And I actually think when it comes to this race, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin are states that the GOP could end up winning. Nevada and the Democratic Party there have completely been in disarray. It's it's a disaster. Um, I think that it's going to be unlikely that we see them win here. I think that it also kind of it's at a nationwide level. It's going to be more. It's it's going to be a nationwide race. I think the Republicans have a shot here, and I think this is certainly going to be the closest state in the state of Nevada. As for the Rust Belt, I think that economic issues in the country are going to be moving factors for them to vote Republican. And I think looking at approval ratings in these states, they can look at some polls. It's likely that Republicans are going to do better and kind of go back to the 2016 type margins. And I think that come 2024, if Donald Trump and Joe Biden is the matchup, Donald Trump will be the winner of this election by 312 electoral votes to 226. So that covers my prediction. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. If you agree with this video, um, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, also give it a huge thumbs up because that would help. But if you enjoy the video, um, you know, please consider subscribing if you aren't. And comment down below what you really thought. So that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And goodbye.